In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this 3D ring effect in Inkscape. To start, I'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool, then I'll hold down the Control key and click and drag to create a circle. I'll open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button up here and give the circle a light blue fill. Now I'll give it a linear gradient with this button, then I'll select the bottom stop, raise the alpha channel all the way up, and make it darker. I'll go to the Select tool now, and shrink down the circle while holding Control. Then I'll move it out of the way. Next I'll go back to the Circles and Ellipses tool and create a large circle here. For this one I'll turn off the fill color by clicking the X, then go to the Stroke Paint tab and give it a stroke with this button. I'll also go to the Stroke Style tab and increase the stroke width a bit, just so it's easier to see. Next I'm going to use the Scatter extension to put many copies of the small circle along the big circle. But first, if I go to the Select tool and move the small circle over here, we can see that the big circle is currently on top of the small circle. For Scatter to work, the small circle needs to be on top, so I'll click this button up here that says Raise Selection to Top, and I'll move the small circle out of the way again. Now I'm going to select both circles, and Scatter tends to work better with paths, so I'll turn the circles into paths first by going up to the Path menu and choosing Object to Path. Now I can go to Extensions, Generate from Path, Scatter. And I'll go ahead and check Live Preview here. The first thing I want to do is add a lot more copies of the small circle really close together, so that this all looks like one solid object. To do this, I need to use a negative number for the space between copies setting. If I go too low, I get this error message. I'll click OK and try slightly larger numbers until I find the smallest number it will let me use. Ok, that looks pretty good. I'm also going to uncheck the Follow Path Orientation option. This gives it a twisting effect. Finally, I'll change original pattern will be to Cloned. This will allow me to modify things like the size and colors of the original circle, and have the changes also be applied to the ring. Now I'll click Apply and close out this dialog. So one problem I have right now is that the blending is a bit off here on the right side. Fixing this requires a few steps. First, I'm going to clone the small circle by selecting it and clicking this button up here. I'll move the clone over here, then click this button to flip it horizontally. Now I want to create one of these rings using the new circle. If I move this ring over here, we can see that the original big circle is still there. I'll select the circle, then press Ctrl Z to move the ring back in place. Now with the big circle under the ring still selected, I'll also select the small circle clone here by holding Shift and clicking it. Now I can simply go to Extensions, Previous Extension to perform the Scatter Extension. So now I have two rings. What I want to do now is take just a small portion of the left side of this ring and put it on the right side of the other ring to cover the unblended area. First I'll press Ctrl Z to move the top ring back in place, then I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle overlapping a small portion on the left side. I'll go to the Stroke Paint tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog and turn off the stroke, then go to the Fill tab and give it a random fill color. I also want to align the rectangle horizontally with the ring, so I'll go to the Select tool, hold Shift and select the ring, open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button, and with the last selected chosen as the anchor, I'll click this button to center them on the horizontal axis. Now I'll use the rectangle to clip the ring by right clicking one of the objects and choosing Set Clip. I'll then flip this horizontally and vertically with this button, hold shift and select the other ring, and in the Align and Distribute dialog, I'll click this button to align the right edges. Perfect. I'll select this piece and the ring again, and group them together by right clicking and choosing Group. Next I'm going to cut out some small chunks along the outside of the original small circle. This will give the ring a ridged appearance. First I'm going to zoom in on the circle by holding down the Control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Next I'll go to the Pen tool, click up here outside of the circle, Hold Ctrl to get a 45 degree angle and click here inside the circle. And while still holding Ctrl, I'll create a horizontal line across here, click up here at a negative 45 degree angle, and click the first point again to close it off. Next I'm going to select both the path and the circle, and use the Align and Distribute dialog to align them vertically with this button. Now I want to make duplicates of this path along the edge of the circle. To do this I'll first turn on Snapping up here, click the arrow on the right and go to Advanced Mode, 
and turn on snapping to object rotation centers. Now I'll close this out, select just the path, and click it again to show the rotation handles. Then I'll grab its rotation center, which is the little crosshair at the center, and drag it down until it snaps to the circle's rotation center. Now I'll turn snapping back off. Next I'll duplicate the path by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. Then while holding control to snap the angle, I'll rotate it clockwise twice. I'll duplicate both of these paths this time and rotate them together. Then I'll duplicate and rotate all four of these. And one more time should be good. Now I'll select all of this. And I want to remove the circle from the selection by holding shift and clicking it. Then I'll turn these paths into a single path by going to Path, Union. Now to cut the path out of the circle, I'll hold shift and click the circle to add it back to the selection, then go to Path, Difference. And because everything is a clone of the original circle, all of it has been affected by the changes. Now one thing we might want to deal with is that if we zoom in a lot, the edges of the ring look pretty jagged. To fix this, I'm first going to select the big circle that's underneath the ring. To do this easily, I can select the ring, then hold down the ALT key and click near the center of the ring. I can see in the status bar that the circle has been selected because it's showing no fill and a black stroke. Now I'll raise the circle to the top. Next I'll go to the Stroke Style tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog and increase the stroke width until the circle covers all but the very edges of the ring. And I want to turn the stroke into a path by going to Path, Stroke to Path. Now I'll zoom back out and select both the circle and the ring. Right click and choose Site Clip. This hides the jagged parts of the edges. Next I'll create a background for the ring. First I'll create a large rectangle covering all of the ring. I'll go to the Fill tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog and give this a linear gradient. Then click this button to show all of the gradients and choose the same gradient that the other objects are using. I'm going to move the light blue gradient stop to the bottom right of the rectangle and the dark blue stop to the top left. Now I'll go to the Select tool and click this button up here to lower the rectangle to the bottom. Then I'll also select the ring and use the Align and Distribute dialog to center them vertically and horizontally. To make the ring stand out a bit more, I can give it a drop shadow. To do this, I'll first select just the ring, then go to Filters, Shadows and Glows, Drop Shadow. In here, I want to have the shadow type set to Outer, and in the Blur Color tab, I want to have the color set to Black with a low opacity, and the Use Objects Color option unchecked. Now I can go back to the Options tab, check Live Preview, and adjust things like the blur radius and offsets of the shadow. However, as you can see, this doesn't work at the moment, and that's because I clipped the ring to hide the jagged edges. This actually hides everything outside of the clipped part, including any filters we might apply to it. To get around this, I can close out this dialog, then right click the ring and choose Group. Now if I apply the drop shadow filter to the group, the shadow won't be clipped. When I like how the shadow looks, I can click apply and close out the dialog. Finally, as I mentioned at the beginning, I can change the colors of the original circle, and it will also change the colors of all the clones. I can even add more stops to the gradient if I want. And if I select the background, I can set its gradient to the matching one. And that's how we can create a 3D ring effect in Inkscape. If you would like to learn more, be sure to click a video on the screen. Thanks for watching.